In this module, we're going to start out talking about gases and the kinetic molecular theory of gases. So, what's the kinetic molecular theory? Well, what it is, it's an attempt to explain why gases behave the way that they do. And so, these five statements are um, what the kinetic molecular theory of gases says. The first one says that in a gas, the particles, that the actual gas molecules or atoms themselves are negligibly small compared to how the distance between them. So really what, what we do for um, an, what we call an ideal gas is we just can say that the, the actual space taken up by the molecules is so small that we don't have to count it at all. It's mostly empty space, almost entirely, almost entirely empty space. Now these particles though that they're in there, they're in there, they're moving in constant motion, they're moving, they're zinging all over the place, moving in random directions, always moving in straight lines until they hit something, then they bounce off and they move in a straight line in a different direction. When they do hit things, the only things they can really hit are the inside of whatever container they're in, they're in or each other. Um, these collisions are what we call elastic. What that means is that there's no dissipative loss, there's no friction, we don't lose any energy. So if two molecules collide, the total energy before of the two molecules before is equal to the total energy of the two molecules afterwards. It might be redistributed, one might be moving, have more kinetic energy afterwards than it did before, but didn't lose any energy. Um, the next one says that there aren't any attractive or repulsive forces between gas particles. So as they're coming, they're zinging around in there, moving around in constant motion, as if two molecules or two atoms come close to each other as they pass. Now, in reality, we know because these atoms, molecules, are made up of protons with positive charges and electrons with negative charges, as they go past each other, there is going to be some attraction and repulsion. Positive, negative attracts, well, negatives repulse and all that. But we neglect that in the kinetic molecular theory of gases. And the last one here says the average kinetic energy of the gas particles, which we're going to look at in a little bit of detail in a moment, is proportional to absolute temperature of the gas. Now that's, that's a nice one, because what that says is that we can basically stick a thermometer into a gas, measure its temperature in Kelvin, and that gives us a feel, um, a measure of the average kinetic energies of these microscopic particles that are moving around. It says that the hotter a gas is, the, the greater the average kinetic energy, the colder the gas is, the lower the kinetic energy. And we'll see in a moment that that means that it, the way we think about it usually is that the hotter the gas is, the faster on average the particles are moving. The colder it is, the slower they're moving on average. So an ideal gas, when we say that a gas is ideal, it means that it behaves, it demonstrates, it behaves like those properties that we listed for the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Now, there is no gas that, exact, that is exactly like that because all gas is composed of particles of matter and that matter takes up some space and we said that we neglected that space taken up. And no matter what, you know, because they have electrons and protons in them as they pass by each other, they are going to interact somewhat, but we're neglecting that. <clears throat> but the the less those things are important, the less the the less important the actual volume taken up by the particles, and the less important the the interactions between the particles as they pass each other are, the more it's going to behave like what we call an ideal gas. The conditions where we get the best or the most ideal behavior, in other words, where the gas acts most like we said in the kinetic molecular theory, is if it's at a high temperature and low pressure. You should remember that, because when they're at a high temperature, that means the gas particles are moving fast. And that means as they pass by each other, they don't have time to really interact. <clears throat> and low pressure means there aren't very many gas particles in a given volume, which means the actual volume taken up by them is really pretty small, the percent of the volume. All right, so now let's talk about kinetic energy. First of all, the equation for kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity squared, or speed squared is how we're going to do it. So in this equation here, which you should remember, m is the mass. Remember that it has to be in kilograms. U is the speed, it has to be in meters per second. Now, for a gas, because we're talking about gases in this module, <clears throat> there's a lot of different particles of gas, and there's a distribution of speeds. We'll see a graph in a few minutes. But some are moving slower and some are moving faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the mean square speed. And what that is, 
if we take the speed of each of those particles of gas, square it, add them up, and divide by how many particles of gas there are, and this capital N is how many particles that there are, we get the mean square speed. This bar means the, the mean, and so we're, taking the, we're squaring it and taking the mean. And that's going to be a measure of our average speed squared, which is what we're going to use for our kinetic energy. For our, because if we have a gas and it's all the same particles, say all helium, they all have the same mass, more or less, but there's this distribution of speed, so they can have different kinetic energies. What we're going to talk about is the average kinetic energy, so we're going to use the mean square speed when we do this square, speed squared. Now, here, it can be shown that, we don't show it in this course, that for an ideal gas, one mole of an ideal gas, the total kinetic energy is 3 halves RT. Pretty simple formula, right? But really nice. Here, R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. You should memorize that. And T is a temperature, and remember that it has to be in Kelvin. So if it's in Celsius, add 273.15 to it. Okay, so now, another way of writing down that average kinetic energy is one-half mass times the mean square speed times Avogadro's number. This mass would be the mass of one molecule or one atom of gas in kilograms. If we take the mass of one molecule times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, that gives us the molar mass. That's really the molar mass here, the mass of one mole of, of the gas. So anyway, if we set these two expressions equal to each other, the one we just saw, 3 halves RT and this one, we rearrange them a little bit, solve for the mean square speed. We get mean square speed is equal to 3RT over Avogadro's number times the mass of one molecule, which is really just the molar mass. Here, M is the molar mass. And now watch out, because we're used to molar masses being in kil uh, grams per mole, right? But here, they have to be in kilograms per mole. R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find what's called the root mean square speed. It's just the square root of the mean of the speeds squared. It's, it's a, a way of uh, finding the average speed of these, these particles of gas. So we call this the root mean square speed, URMS. And that's just equal to the square root of 3RT over M. R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole. T is a temperature in Kelvin. And capital M is the molar mass of the gas in kilograms per mole. Memorize this equation. We're going to use it. So here's that graph I was talking about. So on the left over here, what we have is the same gas, nitrogen gas, at different temperatures. And what we can see is that as the temperature increases, a couple things happen. The, the, this is the molecular speed, U. This is how many molecules have that speed. So there's, say at 100 Kelvin, we have this distribution of speeds. Some of these molecules are moving slow down here. Some are moving really fast up here. Most of them are in here somewhere. The, Root mean square speed is probably somewhere right about here. And as we increase the temperature, the root mean square speed sure increases. But look at this. This is important too. The distribution spreads out. This curve isn't so sharp, but rather broadens out. The hotter we go, the more broad it is, and the higher the root mean square speed. Now if we look at this graph over here, it's the same temperature but different molecules. Notice that the heavier molecule of these three, chlorine, has the the sharpest peak and the root mean square speed at the lowest, um, the lowest point. As the molecules get lighter, the, again, the distribution spreads out and the, and the root mean square speed increases. So now let's do a couple of examples, well, an example. We're going to calculate the root mean square speed and the average kinetic energy of carbon dioxide gas at 23 Celsius. So we just to get the root mean square speed, all we do is plug into that formula I showed you, square root of 3RT over M. So 3 times R times the T. Remember, we have to have this in Kelvin, so we added 273 to this, 1.15. Um, and this is the molar mass of carbon dioxide in kilograms per mole. In grams per mole, it's 44.009, but we divide it by 1,000 to get kilograms per mole. And we get about 410 meters per second. Now, to get the kin added average kinetic energy, we just do 3 halves RT, 3 halves R times T, and we get 3.69 times 10 to the third joules per mole. That's how these units work out. If we wanted to convert it to kilojoules, we would just divide by 1,000, we get 3.69 kilojoules per mole. We could have, now notice, I did it this way, but you could have just as well done 
this. You could have used this equation right, oh, it's right there. <clears throat> Here, you know, you could have found the mass of one molecule, well, actually, Avogadro's number of times this is the molar mass. You could have used the molar mass times, you know, the mean square speed times a half. But I think it's easier just to do 3 halves RT.